Happy birthday, Venom! Hey everyone, welcome to Princess Gay, I'm your host Connie, and today we are here with my blind reaction to Death Becomes Her. And this is not just a donation reward for Venom, but is also specifically a request. And what I mean here is this movie was obviously donated for by uh, Venom, who is a consistent donator on the channel. Um, if you've been watching most of these movie reactions, m the vast majority of them come from him. But this was a specific special request for this reaction, today's reaction, because uh, today, the day you're seeing this, at least not the day I'm recording, but the day you're seeing this, is Venom's birthday. And Venom, you requested like, I don't know, four or five uh, different ideas for movies for me to get to today. And yeah, I, I decided to follow you up on that and we're getting to one so death becomes her um i have no clue what this is about at all i have only very very briefly heard the name of the movie before but never within any level of context i know nothing about what this is about i don't know who's in it i don't know when this movie came out i know nothing and I've talked about before how I kind of prefer it that way because it leads to the most genuine, honest reactions. And sorry if I like keep like messing with my face and all. I have like some dog hairs or something like stuck to me. I was messing with the dog before <laughs> um, to try and shut her up because she's been barking again. So I went over there, just like ruffled her fur a little bit and was like giving her hugs and kisses and stuff, you know, typical dog stuff. <laughs> um, but yeah, so if I'm like messing with my face or anything, it's because I'm trying to get like dog hairs off of my lips and everything. It's like the one downside to kissing a dog is like you get the hairs everywhere. It's not exactly fun. Um, but you know, it's worth it because dogs are cute and awesome. So, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> back on topic. So, yeah, like I said, I know nothing about this. And like I've said, um, I kind of prefer when I know nothing about a movie because it makes the reactions more honest, more genuine, and not really... Um, the, the, the reactions I give aren't really led to through my knowledge going into it. <laughs> I worded that terribly. Uh, my expectations don't cloud my judgment. Let's put it that way. <laughs> so I, I think this is going to be at least a completely fair reaction. Um, don't know what that's going to end up being like, but at least it'll not have anything clouding it beforehand. So... That being said, I guess we should just get right into this. Because uh, the title doesn't even give me much of anything to work with either. It could mean a lot of things. So, I don't know. I, I say we just get into this. So, let's see what Death Becomes Her has in store for us. And once again, happy birthday, Venom. Cutting in here real quick to remind you of all the awesome content we have on the channel. Between Monday and Friday, we have a plethora of awesome series reactions with two on Wednesday. We also have movie reactions every Saturday and Sunday. I do pre-record them during the week, but I upload them on the weekend. And don't forget all the gaming content we have both on this channel and the Secondary Princess of Gaming channel. We have Horizon Forbidden West every other day and Baldur's Gate 3 every single day on this channel, while we also have Near Automata every Saturday on the other. And don't forget to click the link down in the description below to get to today's reaction. I redirect it just due to copyright reasons. And finally, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video if you want to see more awesome content such as this. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let's get on to the reaction. And we are back and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. 
so I, I looked up this movie in, in between after I did the recording and before we got to here to the afterthoughts. I looked things up and apparently this movie did pretty poorly on release and has since just garnered pretty mixed reviews. But in the 32 years since this came out, this came out in 92, by the way, same year I was born. This movie has gained a pretty notable cult following, specifically within the queer community. And it's beyond just the idea of, like, shipping these two together, um, especially after, you know, both of them had, you know, the troubles with uh, their man and everything. It, it even goes beyond that and beyond the fact that they kind of have to remain, like, together because of their decaying bodies and trying to take care of each other and paint each other and everything 37 years later it, it like goes beyond even that there's certain themes and ideas in this film that absolutely speak to the queer community um and, and mind you they speak to other communities as well um but the themes of like uh standards of beauty of just the way you're seen if you don't uphold a certain uh, a certain look as well as the connections with um i'm trying to think of exactly what, what i read <laughs> the connections with things such as their um relationship in a way um with bruce willis's character and various things like that certain themes i, I i'm bad at explaining shit like if you're if you've been on the channel any length of time you should know that but there's there's a lot of ideals in this film that can touch on like things like feminism and Hollywood beauty standards and stuff, but also can very much connect with trans women, drag queens, etc. And and these are people who have found a lot of, you know, comfort in this movie. There's a lot of drag queens who have done performances and, and outfits and stuff based on this film. Probably the biggest one is Jinx Monsoon, who, um, from this channel and my content, you would know for things like Steven Universe, um, where she, um, where they, sorry, uh, voiced Emerald. And various other things like that. Um, they're in uh, Hell of a Boss as uh, uh, Mother Martha. Things like that. So it's like, yeah, Jinx Monsoon like did like entire like wardrobes and stuff and performances and everything based on this film. And trans women i i read an article um i don't think it was the variety one there was a bunch of articles i checked out briefly but there was an article i read that was like written by a trans woman explaining like how some of this stuff speaks to her and stuff and again i'm bad at explaining shit and, and just various things like that it's wild it's crazy and some could even like make arguments for just like the idea of these women's descent into madness and the world that kind of sent them there it, it, it could easily like connect to 
queer people and everything they go through and kinds of the paths they're led down. Though obviously and hopefully not quite to the same level. Because unquestionably, these two, Meryl Streep and Goldie Hawn's characters in this, are the villains. They're bad people. Um, though, to be fair, Bruce Willis wasn't a good person either. No, none of them were. They were all terrible. Um, but, like, there's also the sexuality of it all. Like, a lot of that can very much connect to and speak with a lot of queer people. Um, and, and it kind of is like, uh, what's that one movie? That one movie I reacted to, I'm trying to think of the name. Um, oh my God, I can't think of it. Hold on, let me, let me try to find it. Thelma and Louise. Thelma and Louise. I was trying to think of that other movie we reacted to. It's it kind of there's a kind of a similarity for me with Thelma and Louise, where it's not explicitly queer, but you can absolutely read it that way. Where it's like, oh, this doesn't like go out of its way to confirm anything. It doesn't like like acknowledge any kind of like romantic slash sexual relationship there, but it's kind of hard to not see it in that light if you are queer yourself or have any kind of like notable knowledge and experience with queer media it, it's basically it's queer without being explicit about it it's implicit queerness um subtextual in a way and the fact that, like, this movie to this day is, like, a favorite amongst the community to where it's even, like, consistently played in gay bars and stuff and still, like, inspires drag and whatnot, um, has been a kind of a beacon for a lot of trans women, it's... It's pretty interesting to see kind of its impact on the queer community in that regard. But that doesn't explain anything about what I thought of this film. Because I have not actually... We're like almost 10 minutes into these afterthoughts, and I haven't actually said anything about what I think about this movie other than the aspect of finding it queer and all. This is a dark comedy that very much focuses on the comedy aspect of it. It's extremely goofy, ridiculously silly, just unabashedly stupid, and honestly, all the better for it. This is a movie that knows what it is. It's a movie that's not trying to be anything special. It's not trying to have like the best script or the best uh, even concept. It's, it knows it's dumb and it revels in it. It flaunts it. All the actors in this like really just give it their all. They, 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 and again, they're not trying to give like their best acting performances by any means. Like, remember, this is Bruce Willis after Die Hard. Die Hard came out in the late '80s. This came out in '92. This is Bruce Willis after he already made a name for himself. Because remember, Bruce Willis prior to Die Hard was this uh, like TV comedy act. He was known, but he wasn't like anything special. Die Hard is what created his career. It's what really made him the household name he is. And he goes from that movie that did so amazingly well, that was so successful, 
and plays a character who couldn't be the biggest opposite of John McClane if you tried. Couldn't be more of the biggest opposite of John McClane if you tried. I should I I should word that correctly. It's like John McClane, you have this tough, badass, cool, wisecracking um cop who takes down this German terrorist and everything at Nakatomi Plaza. And then you have whatever this dumb shit was. He is like the most milk toast dumb just like imbecilic weirdo ever. He's he's such a such a turd. Like for lack of a better word, his, his character in this is such a fucking turd. He he's such a pushover. He's so ridiculously like he he he's so like stupid and so like bland that it's almost kind of annoying <laughs> but he pulls it off in such a like surprising way Goldie Hawn and Meryl Streep are fucking fabulous as hell like I mean on top of just being drop dead gorgeous because it's them and you couldn't make these two look ugly if you tried. Like, seriously. Even when they're supposed to look unattractive with, like, the peeling uh, paint and everything. It's like, these two are still fucking drop-dead gorgeous. Like, there is li there's no way to make either of those two look unattractive. It's not possible. It's just not possible. Like, they're in their, like, late 70s and all in, in real life currently, and they still look as, like, just fucking hot as they ever did. Like, they've clearly aged, but they, they just don't seem to care. The way they carry themselves and just their looks in general, and I know a lot of it can come down to, oh, be, they're rich and they can afford all the special makeup and uh work and everything done um though I, I admittedly have no idea how much work they've had done but even if they could afford the best and everything it's like they still just look gorgeous it's like it's just undeniable no matter what no matter how it's achieved um on top of that like, the movie gets progressively weirder and sillier as it goes along. It's like, because at first, it's it's silly, yes. Like, uh, when you see, like, Goldie Hawn in, the, like, the fat suit and everything, and with the, the apartment with all the cats, and she has to be dragged out by her landlord and the cops while rewinding the death scene in the movie over and over again. It's like, that scene was absolutely fucking ridiculous. But it was honestly tame compared to where the movie goes. It's like, at that point, it's it's still relatively, like, normal, for lack of a better word. It, it kind of stays in this range of, like, okay, this is a goofy, silly, funny movie, but it's, it's still believable. You know? It's still, like... A, a typical comedy. The 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 weirdest part was the fat suit. Um, and, and you're kind of reading it as like, oh, so she's gonna try to kill, uh, this lady. Um, I can't remember their names at the moment. I I, I like focused so much on everything else. I can't remember the characters' names. Madeline, 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 and Helen. I don't remember the husband's name, though. But she's focused all this time on um, on what Madeline did to her and everything. So you're thinking she's going to try to kill her. You think that's where it's going. And then all of a sudden, magic potion. Creepy um, sorceress lady. I, I think she's supposed to be like a sorceress or something, maybe. But who's, who's very creepy, but also like unreasonably like sexual 
it's like from her outfit to just the way again she carries herself and positions herself like seriously every shot she's in she puts herself in a different pose that is just like unnecessarily or that's the wrong word actually needlessly that is just needlessly like sexual every single pose it's like she's trying to be as sexy as possible just in every shot she's in and i mean like you see her come out of the pool butt ass fucking naked and while you don't get to see like her full-on tits or anything or you get to see her bare ass and you it leaves very little to the imagination and it, it just it escalates so quickly it escalates so goddamn quickly. And once it starts getting fucking weird, it starts getting fucking weird. Like, it doesn't take any time, really, after, like, she takes the potion for her to uh, die being pushed down the stairs by her husband and then getting back up and zombifying and, like, twisting around and shit. The hospital scene and everything, and then... And then the same thing happens with um, with Helen, with like getting the ACE treatment, the big ass hole through her midsection. It's like, the fuck? <laughs> Seriously though, that hole was so massive. How the fuck was her body staying up? Because their bodies retained injuries. Like um, Madeline's neck, like when it breaks and everything, or when her wrist breaks and everything, those injuries are retained. They they do exist. They don't feel pain anymore, Madeline or Helen, but they, they still have the injuries until I guess they might heal to some degree. Um, But the injuries still exist, so it's like there's some level of logic to it. And, and with that giant asshole in her midsection the little bits that are holding up the entire upper half of her body should not be able to hold that up. I know, it's like magic shit that caused this in the first place, but again, when everything else is kind of adhering to some level of logic, some level of realism, it's like, it's just weird that that is the one thing that just doesn't. <laughs> like, compared to all the other, like, broken bones and whatnot, and the, the decaying skin... It's, it's weird, to say the least. Um, and just, again, even after that point, even after they're both revealed and everything, the escalation of things. Like, even the escalation of how quickly they both get over it and kind of become friends. It's just like, they just have, like, one small conversation with each other. And it's like, okay, we're good now. We're buddies. We're, we're on extremely good terms now. And it's just like, I guess the idea is like they were so like pissy with each other, so bitchy with each other all these years that if they actually took a moment to talk it out at any point, they could have resolved everything. Like there's definitely a little bit of a statement to make with that. <laughs> it's just, it's so ridiculous and wild and crazy and weird and it's just again it owns that it in no way tries to ignore that or whatnot it it, it embraces how stupid it is and the actors embrace it and they roll with it and i appreciate that i appreciate when a movie that is just blatantly fucking dumb not only acknowledges it's fucking dumb but that's literally the joke it, it, it it's literally like being dumb on purpose for the fun of it um i i kind of dig that the effects are so bad but in a good way and maybe it's because of the time this came out and everything apparently this won awards for its effects which is wild but maybe it's because you know i'm looking at i'm watching this like 32 years after it came out so i'm like watching it like 
oh, these effects by today's standards are absolute dog shit. But for some reason, the fact that the, the effects are shit and the way that they're shit is kind of the appeal of them. Like, like when uh, Meryl Streep like lifts up her head and her and she's like stretching and everything and there's even the rubbery noises it's like that the effect looks so fucking terrible but at the same time it's like i don't really care i kind of love it because again it's embracing the stupidness the silliness the 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 absolute insanity of this film it's it's doing that on purpose. And I kind of I kind of love that. It's unashamed. It's completely unashamed of how fucking dumb it is. And I I mean I would by no means ever call this like one of the best movies ever made. I wouldn't even like put it in top tier for like dark comedies or whatnot. But it absolutely deserves its credit where it's due. This is definitely one of those movies that feels like kind of what a cult classic means to me. A movie that's not necessarily the best or anything. And it explains why it didn't do so well when it first came out. It's it's not like amazingly done. But it's it's made in a way to where it's like, oh... I can see why this became so popular decades after its initial release. I see why the queer community loves this so much. I see why feminists love this so much. I get the joke. And honestly, I think that this movie probably, like, at least in terms of my, my view on it, I don't think I would have liked this movie as much if it weren't for me watching this this long after its release. If I if I had seen this movie like in the kind of culture of the 90s or even the 2000s, I don't think it would have worked for me. It's specifically because of where culture is in the 2020s, where it is today. That is why I liked it so much. And because of all this other stuff I've seen, whether on this channel or on my own time, it helps me appreciate this movie much more. I get the kind of messages it's trying to talk about with, with um, like Hollywood beauty standards and whatnot. I understand that. I can understand again the the subtextual stuff that the queer community latches onto i understand like what makes this so appealing to people i get it and i mean it doesn't hurt when like you you have such a great cast like, even outside of just the script and everything, it's like the cast elevates this even further. <laughs> like, it, it's... There's a certain irony, though, when you cast, like, two extremely attractive actresses to play characters who are, like, so obsessed with their... Um, beauty and the way others see them that they see themselves as like unattractive it reminds me of that joke in the barbie movie it, where like barbie's like saying she's like so unattractive and she's not like conventionally attractive barbie a and then the narrator pops in to say that it would be better for the message if you didn't cast margot robbie it's like note to the director of this film if you wanted to make if you wanted to make this statement you should have cast someone other than Margot Robbie who is you know very attractive <laughs> that joke like when I saw this in the, the when I saw that movie in the theaters with my sister I like that was one of the big laugh out loud moments for me like that one 
got me right there in the theater. <laughs> and it's like, it kind of reminds me of that. It's like, th these two women are like, supposedly like, not being seen and not being given respect and everything because they're they're past their prime and they're not as attractive because of their aging and stuff. Like, most of the movie takes place 14 years after, um, Mer uh, the hell was that? <laughs> Someone's revving out there. After, um, oh my god, I can't think of her, their names again now. Helen and, it starts with an M. Hold on. Madeline. But it's like, it's, it's like 14 years after Madeline first married, um, Bruce Willis's character. I'm going to look up his name too. Hold on. I have it still up. Ernest. Dr. Ernest Menville. It, it's like 14 years after she stole Ernest from Helen and married him. And so it's like, they're, they're supposed to be in like their early fifties and everything. And it's like, the point of the movie is they're supposed to not be attractive and viewed by like society and others around them as not being attractive anymore. That's kind of the point. And again, you hire like two excessively attractive women to play this role. It's 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 a it's meta humor that just works. <laughs> it's it, again, it's the same kind of humor as in the Barbie movie with Margot Robbie. It's meta humor that just works. And I love that. I, I, it, they didn't need to do that, but I love that they did. I'm just like, I'm impressed by this movie. Again, it's not the best movie I've seen, not even the best dark comedy I've seen. Um, but it's, it's really good. I did really enjoy it. And I mean, hey. It it was fun, if nothing else. Sometimes all you really want from a movie is for it to just be fun, for it to be a blast to watch. I would watch this again, absolutely. In fact, I'll probably look up uh, reactions uh, after I finish this recording. At least reviews, for sure. But probably reactions, too. I, I, I'd absolutely be willing to watch this again and again. It, I, 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 again, I get it. I understand the appeal. So, yeah. This was a, this was a really, really fun movie to watch. I'm glad I got to check it out. And I'm glad that you suggested it, uh, Venom. Um, for your uh, birthday movie reaction. Um, amongst the others you chose, I just went with this one, <laughs> honestly. And I don't I didn't even have a reason. Like wh when I when I looked at that list you gave me of like suggestions for ones to go with today for your birthday, I just like basically just closed my eyes, pointed my finger and picked at random. It's that's pretty much how it went down. It was that random that, uh, just like not really it wasn't really me choosing that's what i'm trying to get across it wasn't really me choosing because i was just like randomly selecting something just out of what i saw there like i said when i it, it, like i said in the um the the pre-thoughts i had no idea about anything about this film i'd heard the title mentioned before that's it I didn't know who was in this. I didn't know anything about the plot. I didn't know it was a dark comedy. I didn't know anything about the genre or who, uh, anything. I didn't know anything about this except the title. And the title, like I said in the pre-thoughts, didn't really tell me anything. Didn't give me any real hint as to what this was going to be about. I would have never expected that. I was so thrown off with the fucking potion being introduced. That caught me so goddamn off guard. It's like, I, I wasn't expecting any of this. And like I said, like I said in the pre-thoughts as well, that the, the blindness of this led to a more genuine reaction, I feel. 
Like, I mean, you guys can tell me better than I myself can say, but I, I feel like my reaction, like, couldn't have been better than this. Because it was completely unmarred by any, like, preconceived notions ahead of time. I had no idea what was going to happen, so everything that did happen, like, really, like, pulled out my most genuine thoughts. And that's what I want to do for mostly everything on this channel. Some things I'm just not able to because, you know, I'm not as blind as this. But sometimes you just come across something that's like an absolute diamond in the rough. A true untapped classic that really deserves more praise than it apparently gets. I, I had a blast. I had an absolute blast with this film and would love to hear your thoughts. If there's anything I neglected to mention that you want to know my thoughts on specifically, please feel free to ask down in the comments. But otherwise, just leave your general thoughts on this movie, uh, the comedy within, the acting performances, the absurdity of it. Let me know everything about what you thought of this down in the comments below. And for now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.